Good afternoon. This is John Glover. On this date of September 27th, 2018, I'm here to share with you all the God Order news. That God Order news, which I'd like to share with you all, is that God has ordained a black man, Professor Gabriel A. Oyibo, with the ultimate intelligence of Eta Sub Infinity. Eta sub n is the formula which represents intelligence, and n within that same formula is the level of intelligence. God has designed that level, or n, for Professor Yibo to be infinity, hence eta sub infinity intelligence for Professor Yibo. Since black people, like ourselves, share the same genes as Professor Gio Yibo, God has reordained the black race not just to be the most intelligent race, but also the richest race and most undefeatable race. God Almighty's grand unified theorem, nicknamed Gagat, is an infallible revelation from God, which infallibly proved that all theorems, also called everything that exists, and all equations, also called morphisms, which can be isomorphisms or polymorphisms, they all originate or past, present, and future, all of them originate out of one invariant, GI. That GI is defined as God. With orthogonal components, GIJ, and with a diverse known as change of GIJ, comma, J equals zero. It's very important to understand that through this God blessing of Gagat, God has blessed us with the understanding of everything. And this is represented by three major surrenders in the Jim Crow system, which I'd like to share with you all to now, or right now. The first one I'm going to bring up on your screen so you can see that surrender. Please hold. It should be coming up in just a second. Okay, does everyone see something on their screen? Does everyone see a page in front of them on their screen? Yes. Okay, how about you, Mrs. Q? I see it. Okay. This can you is, hear me? Yes, thank you, Mrs. Q. We can hear you. Praise God. Okay, what you have in front of you is an actual list of the greatest mathematics works to select it to honor before Gaga, who was considered to be the greatest mathematician, Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. If you look at the list, you will see at the very top of the names, uh, NR or week 26, you'll see the name Gabriel A. Oyibo. Can you see that? Yes. How about you, Mr. Walker? Yes, I see it. I see it. Praise God. Gagat was selected as the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. In effect, Gauss, if you just quickly, I just wanted to show you who he is so you understand. If you look at his Wikipedia page, which is loading in front of you right now. Johann Carl Frederick Gauss, uh, born in 1777, transformed on in 1855, was a German mathematician and physicist who made significant contributions to many fields in mathematics and sciences. Sometimes referred to as the Princeps Mathematicorum, Latin, for the foremost of the mathematicians and the greatest mathematician since antiquity, Gauss has had an exceptional influence in many fields of mathematics and science and is ranked among history's most influential mathematicians. So that's the ranking of Gauss by, uh, by the Germans and by Europeans in general. He's considered, as you saw, the greatest mathematician since antiquity. This is, of course, prior to Gaga coming out in 1990. But what is important here is in this Gauss year 2005 celebration list, which we're just looking at. The reason why this is important is when Gauss was being honored in 150 years after his transforming on in 1855, in the year 2005, Hence the Gauss year 2005 in red that you see here in the corner. 
Does everyone see that with the cursor circling? Gauss year 2005 in red? Yes. Yes. This was a celebration by selecting the greatest mathematics works in the year 2005, and Gagat was selected as the number one work. To honor or to understand that honor, positioning of Gagat as the number one work to honor Gauss, it's important to understand who could have been in that position, which are the runners up, which we call the company that Professor Evo has kept in terms of this celebration. If you scroll down to week 19, can you see NR19? Okay. Do you see it? Mr. Walker, do you see it? Oh, uh, yes, I see it. I see that. Thank God. And I know Mr. Q sees it as well. It's uh, Sir Michael Latia and Daniel Iago Nitzer, Field Medalist Lectures. Let's break down some of the names in that and terms in that. If you look at the page here that's in front of your screen, you're going to see a page for a Sir Professor Michael Atia. Can you see the page? Okay. Sir Michael Francis Atia, born on April 22nd, 1929. It is a British Lebanese mathematician specializing in geometry. What's more important is in the second sentence, a uh, second paragraph, which is second sentence says, he has been president of the Royal Society from 1990 to 1995, but more importantly, the master of Trinity College at Cambridge, which is 1990 from 1997. Why is that crucial? It seems that Tia is a successor to another famous European mathematician or mathematical physicist, by the name of Sir Professor Isaac Newton, whose page is loading up right now. Can you see that page in front of you? Okay. Yes. Newton was an English mathematician, astronomer, theologian, author, and physicist. At that time, described as a natural philosopher during the period between 1642, his, the year of his birth, to his transformation on in uh, 1727. So why is this crucial? Why is this important? Newton is considered to be one of the top three European mathematicians, along with Gauss and another European mathematician by the name of Euler. Now, many people have recognized Newton more as a physicist as opposed to a mathematician. So that's the reason why Gauss was considered to be a better mathematician than Newton, although Newton came before him as a predecessor and Gauss had a lot of respect for Newton. Many people still consider Gauss to be the better or the superior mathematician. Can you understand that so far? Yes. Okay. So why is that important? The reason why that's important is Newton held the same chair that you saw in, uh, what's his name? Um, Atiyah having, in terms of Atiyah was considered to be the master of Trinity College. Newton held that chair when he was in Cambridge in the 1700s. So for all practical purposes, Atia is a successor to Newton. You follow so far? Okay. All right. In, a, in addition to that, uh, Atia being a successor to Newton, you also have this element, which is what you saw in there, which you saw the work that says fields, metal, list, plural, lectures. You remember seeing that in the NR19 or week 19 listing? Mr. Walker. Oh, I think I do, yeah, two pages. Yes. But do you remember that in week 19 in that celebration, it was uh, Sir mm. Michael T. and Daniel Iago Nitzer field medalist lectures? Yes. You, you remember reading that? Yes, of Tia. Okay. So that's now why we're dealing with this part in front of you. Can you see the Fields Medal page in front of you? Yes. Okay. The Fields Medal is a prize awarded to two, three, or four mathematicians under 40 at the of age, 40 years of age, at the International Congress of the International Mathematics Union, IMU, a meeting that takes place every four years. The most important part is what I'm going to read next. The Fields Medal is widely regarded as one of the highest honors a mathematician can receive and has been described as the mathematician's Nobel Prize. You digest what I just said, sir. Yes, sir. That's very important because Field Medal is equivalent to a Nobel Prize award 
or mathematicians. There's no Nobel Prize in mathematics. So the field medal takes the place of that okay. so far. Mr. Walker, do you follow so far? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Importantly also is the ward has been around since 1936. Uh, so that's when the first ward, if you look at the field medals listing, you see the first year, can you see that being circled as 1936? Yes, also, yes. Yes. So if you take a look at the names as we go by, you'll see in the year 1966, who do you see there? Michael Tia. That's correct. He won that award 52 years ago, the field medal. And if you scroll down, you see the numbers of the people who have won the award. Are you getting a sense of the people that are winning that award? Yes, yes I see that. So, when you get up to this point, in terms of 2002, if you were to count up the number of people who have won the prize in the field medal, there would be about 44 altogether, including a TIA. You understand? Okay. So the work that's listed at week 19 is field medalist, as in plural lecture, which means it contains all of the field medalists, including a TIA. So if you're able to understand there are 44 Nobel Prize award equivalents, in week 19, which is right in front of you. And Professor Tia being a successor to Newton, who Gauss had a lot of respect for as a mathematician and a physicist as well. The company that you keep is established from that name just by itself. You would expect, you would expect a person like a Tia as a successor to Newton, one of the top three European mathematicians, a field medalist awarded as equivalent to Nobel Prize, and being with a collection of works that make up 44 Nobel Prizes to be the number one work to honor Professor Gauss, right? Yeah. Gottigan, the headquarters which conducted this research, actually declared that work of Atia and the other 43 field medalists or Nobel Prize award equivalents inferior to Gaga. That's why the work was selected and placed at week 19 as opposed to week 26, which is at the very bottom. Can you see that? Okay. That's very crucial for you to understand. Gottigan declared a work, Gagat, as being superior to 44 Nobel Prizes. You follow so far? Mr. Yes. There's God. Then you go to week 23. And week 23, we're going to focus on the second name here. Week 23 is here where the cursor is. You'll see Anatoly T. Fermenko. Okay. Anatoly T. Fermenko, you ask, right? Yes. You'll see his page coming up on your screen right now. Anatoly Timovich Fermenko, Russian, born in 1945, is a, he's a, a current day mathematician is a current day uh, Russian mathematician, but he's also a Soviet mathematician as well in the past. Uh, he's also a professor of, professor of Moscow State University and uh, was known as a topologist and a member of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Why is this one crucial? The Russian Academy of Sciences is kind of, and the, the Moscow State University is a very high level, I, like Ivy League schools over there in Russia. The Russian Academy of Sciences is kind of like the Harvard-Yale system in Russia. Can you understand? Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay, I get that. Right. Why is this important? Fermenko is a successor to this man here, which you're going to see in front of you. Can you see the page in front of you? Leonard Euler. Can you see the page in front of you, sir? Yes. Okay. This is a man by the name of Professor Leonard Euler. Euler. Euler was born in 1707 and transformed on in 1783. He was a Swiss, math, Swiss German mathematician, physicist, astronomer, logician, and engineer that made contributions, important and influential discoveries in many branches of mathematics, such as infinitesimal calculus and graph theory, while also pioneering or making pioneering contributions 
to several branches such as topology and analytic number theory. He also introduced much of the modern mathematical terminology and notation, particularly for mathematical analysis, such as the notion of a mathematical function. He is also known in his work for his work uh, in mechanics, fluid dynamics, optics, astronomy, and music theory. Euler was one of the most eminent mathematicians of the 18th century and is held to be one of the greatest in history. He was also widely considered to be the most prolific mathematician of all time. His collective works fill 60 to 80 quarto volumes, more than anybody in the field. He spent most of his adult life in St. Petersburg, Russia, and the capital, which was then uh, Russia as being the most important part. So what is what are you getting from all this? First of all, Euler is considered to be one of the most eminent mathematicians of the century. Newton was, like I said, a very respected by Gauss, but Gauss also had a lot of respect for Euler as well. Euler coming just right before Gauss's birth and his prominence in becoming a mathematician. What's also important to understand is Euler spent most of his academic and adult life in St. Petersburg, Russia. Even though he was a German-Swiss mathematician, he spent most of his academic and adult life in Russia in this system that Fermenko is currently in today. So when again, when I say the establishing the company that we keep, that's the company that uh, we keep here, or Professor Hugo's kept, in terms of Fermenko is a successor to Euler. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Now, considering that Euler was considered to be one of the top math three mathematicians and considered here as the most eminent mathematician of the 18th century, Fermenko being a successor to Euler could have propelled him into a position of being the number one work to honor Gauss. Gottingen, on the other hand, very painfully ranked the work of Fermenko inferior to Gagne. That's why it's placed at NR or week 23 as opposed to week 26. Can you see that? Now week 23, the other one. Let me go back to the list so you can see it. I know. Yes, I saw uh, the other stuff. Week 23. Okay, can you see the list now? Can you see the list now where NR 23 is? Yes, David Hillman, knowledge. Uh, That's 23, right. 23. Yes. It's three places below where Gaga is placed at week 26. Okay. Now the next thing we need to understand is the name at week 24, David Hilbert, Knowledge and Mathematical Thinking. Who is David Hilbert, you ask? Let's take a look. Professor David Hilbert, born in 1862, transformed on in 1943, was a German mathematician is recognized as one of the most influential and universal mathematicians of the 19th and early 20th century. So why is this important? If you see on the right, you see his picture. Can you see his picture? Yes. Okay. If you scroll down, it will tell you what university he was associated with. If you go and look here in terms of institutions, what is the second university that you see listed? Gottingen University. Exactly. Gottingen University. So why this is important is Hilbert is a successor to Gauss himself at Gottingen. Gottingen is the headquarters of intelligence prior to Gaga and its discovery in 1990. But during that time before 1990, Gottingen was considered to be the headquarters of intelligence. One of the reasons why it was considered the headquarters of intelligence was due to Gauss and him heading the mathematics department at Gottingen. Gauss headed the mathematics department in the early 1800s, up until his transforming on in 1855. Hilbert is his successor. Can you, can you understand that? Hilbert. Hilbert, yes. Hilbert, yeah, I hear you. Hilbert. He was the chairman of the mathematics department. Do you understand that? Yes. Just like Gauss was the chairman of the head of the mathematics department. Now, if you scroll and look further on the right side of the page, you'll see a listing of doctoral students. Can you see that? Yes. Doctoral students are people who have obtained their PhD in the subject of mathematics in this particular instance, 
under Gauss, uh, uh, under Hilbert, excuse me. Hilbert, okay. If you look at the number, how many would you say, how many people would you say are there in that list? Just give an estimate. 25, 30. Ooh, I can't see uh, the is. How about if I told you that in reality, if you counted them up, and I'm going to highlight in the main page, can you see what's highlighted on the main page to the left of that list? Oh, yes. Among his 69 PhD students in Gottingen, in mathematics, that is. So what that means is Hilbert was responsible for overseeing 69 PhDs in mathematics under him. And it's not just getting PhDs, just uh, students fading into obscurity. As you can see, not only the students listed in the doctoral students, they all have hyperlinks which means they link to other pages in Wikipedia, which illustrate they're not nobodies in mathematics. Oh. In mathematics. In fact, that's a very important thing to understand because the names that you see here, particularly, for example, if you look at the name Richard Courant, yes. Richard Courant is a mathematician that had gotten his PhD under Hilbert, and due to the Nazis and the rise of the, uh, the Nazis and the Holocaust beginnings in Germany in the 1920s and 30s, Courant, uh, who was a Jewish mathematician, had to leave Germany to come to America to create what's now known as the Courant Institute, Mathematics Institute in New York University, which is a very famous and most a very respected mathematics department or mathematics, uh, uh, what you call it, a ma uh, mathematics institute within New York University, which is considered to be an Ivy League. Mr. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. I just want you to be on the same page because it's very important to understand the nature of the company that Professor Ubel kept in this to understand its ranking. So you have Gilbert, who was a chairman of the mathematics department of Cambridge, uh, uh, sorry, of Gottingen University, a successor to Professor Gauss, who also was a chairman at Gottingen University of the math department. A man who has overseen 69 PhDs in mathematics and also is considered to be the last of the great mathematicians. He easily could have been a shoe-in for the number one work to honor Gauss. Gottingen very painfully had to rank their own son of Hilbert inferior to Gagat, which is why if you go back to the list, you see Hilbert is placed at week 24 as opposed to week 26. Okay. He didn't follow that so far. Yes, I see that. Now comes the real proof of the point, which now is, okay, I've talked about who could have been the number one position. Okay, why was Gagat selected as the number one position? First, let's break down why number the Gagat is the number one position. Have you taken any courses in statistics? So this is not meant to put you in the spot. It's just a question just to see if you can understand further the, what I'm going to explain. Uh, no, I hadn't, but I'm with you. Okay. Have you remembered in the subject of statistics studying a particular concept of standard deviation and a distribution of data in a term what's, or in a curve known as a Gaussian bell curve? Yeah, I believe I've seen that I'm from, uh, on yeah. one of your videos. Let me show you an example of that type of curve. For example, one of the reasons why it's important to understand the significance of Gauss is because the Germans have understood the nature of recognizing their geniuses and immortalizing them. One of the ways they immortalize Gauss is if you look on the screen now, can you see a picture of Gauss on what's called a Deutschmark, German currency for money? Can you yes. see it? Yes. Okay. Do you see, I, I know it's hard to tell because of the colors, but can you see this, gra uh, this graph? In the background, right yes. You see it? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, that curve in the background is what we call a Gaussian bell curve or Gaussian distribution curve. Okay. Peak where the cursor is right now, where the circle part of the cursor is, is the highest point in the curve. And every other point in the curve is below it. In mathematics, we call that point an absolute maximum. Absolute maximum meaning no point can get any higher than that. You Okay. Okay. So what's important to understand is now let's go back to the list. 
The list is a week that uh, has a list of weeks for each year of the Gauss year 2005 celebration. There are 52 weeks in a year. Can you follow that part so far? Yes. Yes. Now, in every one of those bell curves, it's always usually considered to be average, or the middle point is that what or what's called the median. Median in this case is a middle point. In order to obtain the median, you have to divide the number 52 by the number two. What is 52 divided by two, sir? Uh, 20, 25 and a, and a half. 50 divided by two is 25. What is 52 divided by two? Oh, I'm sorry, 51 and a half. Okay, so what's the number? The number you're looking for is 26. 26, oh, I'm sorry. 52 divided by 2 is 26. So what does that mean is the median or the middle point is the week 26. That's where Gagat was placed. Why this is crucial is when you recognize Gagat was placed as the number one work or the central work to honor Gauss, okay, how does that now? You now understand Gagat as being the number one work because of its position, but now the question is why? was it selected to be the number one work, right? That high point, yes. Okay, let's prove that to you. And that's what we do here at the Ophapic Institute of Technology. We prove everything we say. We don't just say something and then tell you to accept it or just don't question it. We're not like a church or like a dogma or a faith where we yes. just we just accept it and go along with it. Here in the Gagatical state that we're in, in GIJ, comma J, because you're here at Ophapic Institute of Technology, we prove everything we say. In fact, we order you to challenge anything that we say. And you can challenge us at any point in this broadcast of the briefing. The way we're going to prove that this work was selected as the number one work on our Gauss is from the nature of Gagat itself. Gagat standing for God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem. It has expressed in reality, what is mathematics? It's a phrase that scares a lot of people, but Gagat simply decoded what mathematics is, which is the study of theorems. Can you understand that? Yes. Theorems are another way of saying infallible truth. You, sir, are an infallible truth. You exist. You can see yourself in a mirror. You can hear your voice. You can touch your shoulder or your head to recognize you exist. That's how you prove that you exist, and that makes you a theorem. Can you see that? Yes, sir. All right. In addition to that point, what's also important to understand is this next point. What I'm bringing to your attention are statements, which we're going to use to ultimately prove the conclusion that we get from this. The second statement is from the words or the acronym of God, God Almighty's Grand Unified and theorem. Those are the words that make up God. All those words in that acronym are important. The last two words are perhaps the most important for this, which is unified and theorem. And you follow so far, sir? Yes. Unified theorem basically translates to meaning it kind of Gaga contains all theorems. You will follow that as well. Yes. Please challenge if there's any point that you don't understand. So we're going to take those two statements. The first statement is Gaga decoded mathematics to be or the study of theorems. You understand that? Yes, sir. Then we also define from the definition of Gaga, from the last two words, unified theorem, Gaga contains all theorems. Do you see that? Yes. We're now going to take these two statements to now prove the conclusion. Since Gaga has defined mathematics to be the study of theorems, and since Gaga contains all theorems, one can now infallibly, or therefore, now prove that Gaga contains Make a all of mathematics. Do you follow and see that, sir? Could you repeat that? That you? Sure, I'll go over the proof again. We're going to take the two statements that you just agreed upon to prove the conclusion. The first statement was that mathematics has been defined by Gagat as being a study of theorems. Did you not agree with that? Yes. Okay. From the acronym of Gagat, God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem, 
Just from the last two words, unified theorem, what does that mean? Gaga contains all theorems. Do you follow that point? Yes. Okay. We're going to combine those two statements and now come up with a conclusion that's infallible. The first statement was, Gaggett has defined mathematics to be the study of theorems. Then the second statement is, Gaggett contains all theorems. Since Gaggett contains all theorems, and mathematics is the study of theorems, Gaggett hence contains all of mathematics. You understand? Okay. Contain all. Question. You see, if you don't, just ask a question. I'll go over it again. Okay. You have a question? No, sir. No, sir. Do you want me to go over it again, then? Uh, no, no, sir. Go ahead. I count it. Praise God for that. So what's important to understand is why is this crucial? What it means now is Gaga can reproduce any mathematical formula or work from the past. If you may remember, if your days in school, you may have done things like quadratic equations. We had a formula for solving that. The quadratic formula, uh, if you took physics, you may remember certain course uh, formulas for movement in terms of kinetic, kinematic equations. Uh, if you did any type of mathematics, any type of formula, or even simple algebra or arithmetic, all that's embedded inside gij comma j equals zero. So that means every past mathematical work is reproducible from Gaga. Any present day mathematical work of this year of September, 7th, 2018, is also reproducible from Gagat as well. That means the works on this, like, for example, Professor Sir Michael Tia at week 19 and uh, other field medalist at the week 19, all of their works combined are reproducible from Gagat. If you go to week 23 and look at Fermenko's work, every work that he has done is also reproducible from Gagat. Hilbert at week 24, all of his work is reproducible from Gaggett, as is Newton. Newton's work is reproducible from Gaggett. Euler, Euler's work is reproducible from Gaggett. Reeb, we're going to get into it later in this broadcast. Uh, another student or uh, person under Gauss who headed the mathematics department after Gauss, but before uh, uh, Hilbert, he also, his work is all reproducible from Gaggett. And even Gauss himself, the man and the professor who this dedication was for, all his work is reproducible out of GIJ, comma, J equals zero. So that means Gagan reproduces all present day mathematics works. Can you follow that part so far? Yes. It also means Gagan can reproduce all works of the future. For example, if we were to fast forward to the year 2071 AD, Someone can claim to come up with something new in mathematics then, it is already still contained and reproducible out of Gaga. So it's not new in reality. You can go even further to year 3070 AD. If someone says they have something new in mathematics then, it is still reproducible from Gaga. You can go as far to the, out as to the year 10 billion AD. And Anyone that comes up or claims to have something new in mathematics, it is still embedded inside GIJ, comma, J equals zero. Can you follow that part so far? I know that part is a little tricky in terms of the future, but do you follow it so far? Yes. Yes. Okay. So since Gaga can reproduce any past mathematical work, resident mathematical work, and future mathematical work infallibly, this forced the Germans to do something that was considered to be unprecedented. Before I go into what it did, you have to understand that Germans who are celebrating Gauss, they are considered in the European system prior to Gaga to be the most intelligent of the Europeans and the, were considered to be the most intelligent people prior to Gaga and the discovery back in 1990. The reason why they were considered the most intelligent was due to Gauss. In particular, one of the things that the Germans did that was forced by Gaga was before Gaga, if there had been no Gaga and had not come through Professor Ebo, there's no way a black man would have ever made this list. Do you follow that part so far? Yes, yes. Jim Crow has set up a system before Gaga that automatically precluded black people from being on the celebration of Gauss or people like that 
Gaga, on the other hand, not only forced them to put a black person on the list, but at the very top of that list because of what I just proved and explained to you earlier, which is Gaga can reproduce and for, has contains in it all mathematics, which means every mathematical work, including every other mathematical work that's on the list of celebrating Gauss is reproducible out of Gaga. So why this is important is the Germans have an effect surrender to the black people. They have surrendered that mathematical excellence back upon from Gauss. If you remember on his Wikipedia page, it said things like he was considered to be the greatest mathematician since antiquity. Do you remember that? Yes, yes. When they've now surrendered over to a black man, Professor Ohibo, a Gagatian, an African, a black man, they've now taken that baton from Gauss, who was before Gaga considered to be the greatest mathematician. They have now handed it over to Professor Yibo and officially declared Professor Yibo as being the greatest mathematician of all time that can never be surpassed, past, present, and future infallibly. Do you see that, sir? Yes, praise God. And as from the graphics, what is important to understand is that's a maximum point where Professor Ebo is on that curve. The only entity that can be higher than Professor Ebo is Prof uh, God in terms of intelligence and in mathematics. Can you see that? Yes. Since God that contains all mathematics, nothing can supersede it. Do you follow that, sir? Yes. So that's a surrender from the Germans. Remember, the Germans could not, I mean, they have such a high esteem of themselves. They don't even want to see themselves as equal to anyone. Gottingen was forced through Gaga to not only recognize the blessing that God has blessed the black man, but has recognized them, to force them to recognize a black man as being not just their superior, but being more uh, the greatest mathematician of all time that can never be surpassed. So we say to that, Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God for that. So now, the next praise one, God. Yes, praise God for that, Miss Q. God bless you. So the next part that we need to go over is another surrender, but this one coming from another area of the world, not from Europe in particular. Sorry, that's not. Okay, and that's from India. Now, why is India so crucial? India is a uh, very populous country in the Asia, con Asian continent. But why is this important? Why is this particular country so important? Let's take a look. If you look here at this, uh, this is a research paper abstract. Gage for an abelian churn diamond system consistent with equations of motion, right? That in front of you. Yes. Okay. Now, I know some of the terms may be confusing. Let me break down some of them. The first term is abelian. What does that refer to? Abelian refers to a specific type of group in mathematics. There's a, a particular subset in mathematics called group theory. It was called the theory by Jim Crow when it shouldn't have been, because in mathematics, what you're supposed to be dealing with are theorems, statements of absolute truth that can be proven, not theory. Theory is what we call a guesswork or a conjecture or hypothesis at best. That's not, a same as, that's not the same as a theorem. In mathematics, you're supposed to be dealing with theorems, not theories. So why is this important? In the old group theory that Jim Crow created, there was a concept of what's considered to be known as a group. A group basically established under, uh, if you had a set of numbers, under a specific operation, did, if you took two elements from that set of numbers and engaged it in an operation between those two, would it generate another element or member of that set? That principle in group theory is known as closure. Do you understand so far? Yes. God bless you, sir. You're right. Yes. All right. 
And the next thing is a property called associativity. Associativity is a property where if you have three elements out of a set, like say in integers, if you have something like one plus two plus three with operations addition, if you add the one and the two first and get your answer, then add that answer to three, will it equal, if you take the last two numbers first, two and three, add them up, and then get whatever your answer is there, add that to one and see if it's the same. You understand so far? Yes. In the case of the first instance, we have one plus two. One plus two is three. So one plus two is now turned to three. So now I have three plus three in terms of the one plus two plus three. Three plus three is six, correct? Yes. Okay. Now we're going to take the other side. Let's say if we start with two and three first. Two plus three is five, correct? Yes. So now instead of having one plus two plus three, you have one plus five. One plus five is? Six. Excellent. So that's the principle of associativity. Then you have what's called an identity, an inverse. An inverse is a number in a set of uh, number or numbers in an operation that will cause, if you take that number and, uh, and you take the operation with the inverse of that number, you should get the identity element, which in this case is zero. Zero for addition. So in other words, if you have the number two, what would be the number you'd have to multiply in terms of inverse-wise, in, uh, not multiply, excuse me, add to that inverse-wise, that would ultimately get that to equal zero, which is the identity element for addition? Minus two or plus zero? Yes, correct, minus two, you're right. Two has to be added to a minus two or subtract two from that two to get zero. That's your, what we call inverse. So in other words, for any arbitrary number, which is what we call generalization mathematics in terms of algebra, as opposed to pure arithmetic, if you have a number A, which could be any number in that set, the inverse of that number would be negative A. And you see that? Yes. And then, as I mentioned earlier, in that same part, there's the identity element. The number that, if you add any number to it, you get that number itself. That, in the case of addition, is zero. That makes up what's called a group. An abelian group has all those characteristics that have to be satisfied, but it has an additional characteristic which needs to be satisfied, which is what's called the commutativity pro uh, principle or property. Commutativity, uh, commutativity is a principle where if you have two numbers, if you take the first number and then take the operation of the second number, Will it be the same as if you switch the places of the two numbers? For example, will 1 plus 2 be equal to 2 plus 1? I yeah. think you know, the answer with that is yes, it would be the same. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. You see that, correct? Yes. So for all practical purposes, that's what's commutativity. That's what makes up an abelian group. The abelian trend simons system you see in the title, the abelian refers to that type of group, a commutative group. You understand? Yes. So that's its connection to what's called, they were looking for, which is a uh, 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 unified uh, group, uh, theory, a unified field theory. God found a new group theory, which ultimately was discovered by Professor Yibo, which now in reality is a new group theorem because it's provable. It's something that's infallible and can be proven. And more to the point, through this Gagat new group theorem, Professor Oyibo was able to actually solve the problem of the unified field theory, which is now God Almighty's grand unified theorem. You understand that part so far? Yes. So let's take a look at the authors of this paper. You look at the third name in particular, which is being circled. What is the name that you see, sir? That's Gupta, G-A-S, D-A-S, yes. That's Gupta, I think that's, that's how you correct, know. sir. That is correct, yes. it's that's Gupta. So, and you see, what is the department there from? Sorry about that. Sir? It's all right. Do you see the yeah. university that he's associated with and what, uh, department in that university is associated with? 
And the line right after the fourth name below it, you see the, oh, the department. department of physics. Yes. Department of Physics. Jamia Milia Islamia. The New Delhi in India. And it gives even the area and the zip code for it. 110025. This was published in July 16, 2006. So why is this crucial? Dasgupta comes from a very, a very famous and top 20 university system or school in India called Jamia Milia Islamia. If you didn't get from the name that it has its connection to Islam and Muslims, yes, it does have its connection to Islam and Muslims. It is considered to be not just like I said before, a top 20 school. It is also considered, which is important, this university was critical in terms of the Indians getting independence from England in the late 1940s. You're right, sir? Okay, I'm with you. Okay. So Dasgupta comes from, he's a mathematical physicist, a professor of mathematical physics from a top 20 school in India called Jam Milia Islamia. What's important to understand next is the following. Indians have won a great deal of Nobel prizes in the search for what's it called they, what they were looking for, which is unified field theory. People like, I don't know if you've heard of the name, have you ever heard of the name Chandra Sarkar? Uh, no, no, I hadn't. Okay. Chandra Sarkar was an English, uh, Indian physicist who have won the Nobel Prize in 1983 for what's called the Chandra Sarkar Limit. It's a certain point in the star, like a sun, where it reaches its final mass before it implodes on itself. We'll get, you don't have to worry about the dynamics of that right now, but that's a, it's basically it's a very important part in terms of what they were looking for for a unified field theory. Okay. Another countryman of his by the name of Abdus Salam, another Indian, had won the Nobel Prize in 1979, about almost 40 years ago, with two other European mathematicians pertaining to what's called the electromagnetic weak unification. So for all practical purposes, Atiya comes from a group of people who are considered to be very hope, or very high hopefuls for coming up with a unified field theory. Can you see that? Yes. So why is this important? Dasgupta also comes from a caste system in India. For the caste system, sir. Yes. I'm back with him, sorry. Yes, but I'm asking a question, sir. Have you ever heard of the caste system? Oh, yes. Yes, I have. All right. The caste system is a very important part to understand why India is so crucial towards understanding Gaga. In India, the caste system is in place, in particularly in Hindu areas, primarily as a means of classifying people by skin color. The so-called lighter-skinned Indians are so-called the highest level in the Jim Crow system or in this caste system. As you get into darker shades and darker hues of uh, black people or Indian people, darker skin, they get considered to be in lower levels of that caste system. When you reach the actual black people in India, they are referred to by the Indians and the caste system as Dalit or untouchables. You understand? Yes, yes. This is the background Dasgupta comes from. Dasgupta had come from a background where, because Jim Crow tolerates Indians slightly better than black people, that before Gagat, a black person can be even of a lighter skin color than a, an Indian, but the Indian would still not respect that black person because of that, that so-called seeming to have a better experience with Jim Crow than black people. That has now changed through Gagat. Gagat now has demolished the caste system, and I'm going to prove how it's done. It's done by this letter that was written by Professor Crescendo Dasgupta. I'm going to put it on the screen right now so you can take a look. And you see the, 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 the message that he sent to us right in front of you? Yes. Now let me read it so you can go over why it's so crucial. 
As you can see from the top, it says from Crescendo Das Gupta, July 25th, 2007, at 9.24 a.m. Uh, to Gabriel Yibo, G.A. Yibo, sorry. Subject, God's mission and Das Gupta. Dear Oyibo, first of all, before I continue, do you remember the date, July 25th, 2007? This message is over 11 years old. Okay. In addition, one of the things that's also important to understand here about Das Gupta is when he said the title, God's Mission and Das Gupta. Das Gupta, in effect, is testifying and swearing about what he's about to say and articulate in this piece. You understand that? Yes. Let's read the message. Dear Oyibo, good day. I heard that you have been successful in finding the unified field theory. Congratulations. You are more close to God than any of us. You are more close to God than any of us. I was also working upon this theory. Since God, sorry, since my theory was different, God was different to me. Please write to me as I would like to know where I was wrong. Thanking you, yours, Crescendo Dasculpa. This letter, like what you saw at Octagon, is a surrender from the Asian world to the black people. Now, let me break down how this is a, uh, a surrender from the Asian people. The first thing to understand is that Das Gupta, coming from a caste system, was automatically determined to view black person as being beneath him. But because of Gagat, Gagat not only forced Das Gupta to recognize the reality of a black man being not just superior in intelligence to himself, but now as being more close to God than any of us. Can you see that? Yes, praise God. That has now propelled the black people into position where they're the ultimate in terms of if Professor Ebo has been blessed as being more close to God than any of us, we as black people who share his genes, like the God order said, means that black people are more close to God than any other race. Can you see that? Yes. That's why it's so crucial to understand the importance of this point. In addition to that, Daskuptos has another consideration which has to be brought up, which is in India, where he is, is a very strong Muslim part. As you can tell from the name of the university, Jamia Millia Islamia, there's a very heavy Islamic influence in India. Can you see that or understand that part? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. One of the things that's important is in his country, there's also a lot of Muslims. One particular uh, Indian who wrote and challenged the position of, uh, um, of the Indian people and particularly, not Indian people, but the, the concept of Muhammad and how Muhammad was viewed or should be viewed was challenged by a man called Sahaman Rushdie. Have you ever heard of that name before? I'm not sure. Okay, Salman Rushdie was a in Indian, and still is, excuse me, is an Indian uh, book uh, writer, a person who writes books. He wrote back in 1988, about 30 years ago, a work called The Satanic Verses. Have you ever heard oh, of it? Yes. Yes. I know satanic that. Verses, do you know what that book is supposed to be about? Uh, uh, yes, talking about the religion. He was that written. I hadn't read it, but I assume he was talking about their, uh, their religion, the Muslim yes. religion. But it's not just talking about the religion in the abstracts. He's actually engaged in attacking Muhammad. The reason why that's important is in the Islamic community and faith, Muhammad has more prominence than even God in that religion. So he was, Rushdie was in basically saying, basically presenting an image of Muhammad that challenged the image of Muhammad that the followers of Islam had. This caused a great deal of problems. For example, in that same year, 1988, the Ayatollah of Iran at that time actually ordered 
the followers of Islam to attack and kill Salman Rushdie back in 1988. Did you hear about that, sir? Yes, I remember that. I remember that clearly. Yes, yeah, so now you can realize it's no joke in terms of if someone can just say something about Muhammad and get their life nearly threatened, and the English had to rescue him out of India and bring him to England. Oh, okay. Now have Dasgupta, who's now declaring a black man, a Gagutian, as being more close to God than any of us do to Gaga. That directly deals with the fraud of Jim Crow, which uh, propagates a so-called non-black, particularly white type, as being intelligent. Gaga has accomplished that by now recognizing that Professor Dasgupta declaring Professor Yibo as being more close to God than any of us. It means Professor Oyibo supersedes Muhammad. How does Professor Oyibo supersede Muhammad? It's very simple. God bless Professor Oyibo for formula. G-I-J, comma, J equals zero. Muhammad, in the so-called text, in the so-called Quran, even though they say he had some biological knowledge, there's nowhere in the Bible where they specify that he had any knowledge in mathematics or of any formula or anything like that. In addition, the other reason why that's important is Dasgupta could have faced the fatwa like Rushdie did in India. However, because his statements were infallibly true and could not be challenged, that is what protected him, Dasgupta that is, from when he wrote that back in July of 2007. Up until this year, September 18th, Dasgupta is alive and well because he spoke the truth, which is infallible. You understand that, sir? Yes, yes. In addition to him speaking that truth and being infallible, when it came time to challenge uh, him on that uh, Rusty's work, they could not because he, the, no one can go against the God order, which Dasgupta understood. That's a victory for the black people. Gagat demolished the caste system. You understand? Yes, thank God. Not for that. The other point that's also understood is the situation is analogous to Christianity. Because in Christianity, the most prominent figure in Christianity is not even God, but Jesus Christ. You understand? Yes, yes. Okay. So if Dasgupta was a Christian, and he declared as being a uh, so-called uh, uh, trying to compare Professor Yibo to Jesus. When you recognize that he said Professor Yibo is more close to God than any of us, yes, that statement's important. Is when it says more close to God than any of us. The only entity that could be higher is God, and in the Bible. Nowhere has it specified in the Bible that Jesus had any formula or any understanding of mathematics. God has blessed Professor Yuba with the formulas eta sub n, which is the formula for intelligence, which I was going over in the beginning, along with gij, j equals zero, which has a solution to every problem. Nowhere in the Bible or the Quran was there ever specified Jesus or Muhammad respectively having a solution or of the actual concept or that formula, G-I-J comma J equals zero. In addition, again, Gaga made it impossible for them to challenge that point of Professor Hugo being more close to God than any of us because the work contains every mathematical formula. As I was going over with Gottigan, every mathematical work that was selected to honor Gauss is reproducible out of Gaga. Any other mathematician's work is also reproducible out of Gaga, provided that the work is correct. So when you take into mind the fact that neither Jesus nor Muhammad can, uh, uh, Professor Ebo supersedes them both, it's easy for someone to say, what's that brother smoking? Or how dare he's blaspheming like that, correct? Yes. How do you prove that such an absurd point, right? That's your question. The proof of why Professor Ebo supersedes both Muhammad and Jesus Christ is because of God in itself. G-I-J comma J equals zero has a solution to all problems. 
Neither Jesus nor uh, no, had such a formula in terms of G, I, J, comma, J, comma, zero. And in fact, none of them were even mathematicians. They gave in the case of um, Muhammad a credit as being a carpenter or doctor. Uh, so not a, a Jesus is a carpenter, but the, in the case of Muhammad, they claimed that he had some biological knowledge, but no mathematics, no formulas, nothing. Only Gaga has the ultimate formula to solution to all problems, and that came through the brains of Professor Oyibo. That's very important. That's an important surrender from uh, Professor Dasgupta. Dasgupta has basically now shown the caste system is dead. Gaga demolished it. And you have to understand the caste system has been around not for, say, a couple of years or a couple of decades or centuries even. It's been around for millennia, thousands of years. Gaga demolished all that. That's what forced the surrender. Because when Dasgupta declares Professor Yibo as being more close to God than any of us, he is now recognizing Professor Yibo as being the greatest mathematician of all time and the greatest genius of all time. And that's what prompted, God had prompted that recognition. Can you follow and see that? Yes, sir. And last, we have the Gaga at Yale study. That's what happened here in America in terms of, okay, Gaga came out. What happened here in our country right now? You see the page in front of you? Yes. This is a page from a University, uh, a collaborative effort of universities conducting research on G I J comma J plus zero, and more importantly, A to sub N. This is a research that was granted in 1997 by President Bill Clinton. Gaga ordered Clinton to actually take the A to sub N formula to the labs to determine the intelligence level of the black people. It's important to understand if you're looking at the list, can you see the names that are underneath the title? Yes. Do any of those names look like black people names to you or people that could be brothers or sisters? Uh, no, I couldn't tell you. No. You're correct. Not one of those are black people. In fact, the point that makes it very clear under the title Nuclear DNA Diversity in Worldwide Distributed Human Populations, look at the name that I'm circling on the bottom of that title. In a K kid, K K K. Now, don't don't go too fast over it because that's important. What are the initials of that name? K K K. Exactly. That testifies who was conducting this research. Can you see that, sir? Yes. Okay, that's very important. In addition to that, if you see the superscript B, superscript B, it's a key. You know, it has a, it's a connection to the legend or the detail of where he's from. The superscript B corresponds to Yale University School of Medicine. The department. I'm sorry. I was, I was reading that. I'm sorry. Department of Genetics. I was reading. Yes, with Depart uh, Department of Genetics. Uh, one. So sorry. Three 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 Cedar Street, New Haven, Connecticut. Zero five zero six five one zero, and then USA. Yale was the lead researcher of this research. And what they did, combined with other non-black universities, again, it's important to reiterate, this was not done by black people. If you, There's no HBCU here, no Howard, no Hampton, no Morehouse, uh, or any of those others. Okay. Jim Crow. You can tell that from the names of the universities. University from Rome, Italy. The other two American universities was Pennsylvania State and Louisiana State. None of those are black. And also, what's important to understand in light of that is the following. They recognized Professor Oyibo's intelligence to be atheist of infinity. So now the goal was to now take the atheist of formula to determine the end for the black people and how black people would compare. Understand? Yes. Go down to the abstract. You'll see where it says the fourth line. The abstract says in the fourth line, starting here, in this way, the European bias and the nuclear polymorphism ascertainment has been avoided. Can you see that? Yes. Let's break down what that means. First, let's go over the word European bias, or European bias. What do you think that means?
not being fair on both sides. The European, you right all. track, but in reality, what it means is that what's important to understand about European bias is it's a synonym for Jim Crow. You understand? Okay. Synonym for three uh, three fifths as well. If you remember the fraud that Jim Crow propagated on black people in terms of three fifths. Yes. That's example of what this character, I mean, what this particular uh, phrase or term is. European bias is a synonym for Jim Crow. So what they're saying is, in order for the correct results to be obtained, they had to remove the Jim Crow factor out, which is the factor of the taking of, of the term European bias out. Once the European bias has been removed, the correct ascertaining of the intelligence level of the black people is going to be achieved. Polymorphism goes back to what I was saying in the beginning when I said that all equations, which can be isomorphism or polymorphisms, they are measures of intelligence. And what's important to understand about polymorphism are the more polymorphisms an organism has, the more intelligent that organism is. Can you follow that part so far? Yes. So why is that important? The reason why that's important is that Humans have a base number of 15 polymorphisms. That's what you're going to see in line six of that report. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. Why is that important? 15 polymorphisms are amongst all humans, whether you're black or a Gagutian or non Gagutian, which is your whites, Asians, Jews, and Arabs. So the reason why that's important is that 15 polymorphisms were shared among mo most were shared among most of the populations compared. Whereas 13 sites are found to be endemic to Africans and four to non-Africans. Let's count up that. What it's saying there is that there are 15 base number of polymorphisms amongst humans. There are an additional 13, which are within black people, and an additional four for non-blacks. Can you see that? Yes. So what happens here is the following. In the case that I just brought you up to you, 15 polymorphisms plus 13 polymorphisms is, what's 15 plus 13? 15, 13, they're gonna be 28. Oh, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. 15, 13, that's 28. 28. 28, that's correct, sir. 28. That's the N level, N plus one level for Professor, I'm uh, sorry, for the black people, which is 28. Can you see that part so far? All right, now you, you added that. Dude. Intelligence level. Or quotient. The 28 is intelligence level, the quotient. Can you understand? Okay. Now, the next step is to take the other account, which is there are 15 polymorphisms shared amongst the non blacks, and then those four, sorry, there are four additional to those non blacks. So if you add 15 plus four, what do you get? 19. 19? That's correct. N plus one in that case is 19. So if you take the ratio of the black people's intelligence, represented by 28, compared to non-blacks intelligence, which is compared to 19, what do you get? 19. 28 to 19, you understand? Can you see that, sir? Um, I'm, I'm, I got lost on that, I'm sorry. Okay, what, what mark did you get lost in? Uh, the 28 and, and the 28 and the 19. Uh, okay. Uh, the N, plus one is part of the A to sub N formula. But what's important to understand is that we said N is the level of intelligence or degree of intelligence or the intelligence quotient. N plus one is. If you have the number that you just, I just went over with you, 15 polymorphisms or the N, base N for black people and non-blacks is 15. There are an additional 13 Ns for black people, which means you add the two together, 13, 
plus 15 is 28. You see that? Yes. That 28N is the N plus one level. That is our intelligence for black people. And you see that? N plus one intelligence. On the contrary, for the non-blacks, they have a, 14, uh, a 15 plus a four. That it's a base which is 15 plus four, which they're the 19. Mm -hmm. So four plus 15 is 19. So the ratio to black people's intelligence, to non-black people's intelligence, is a ratio of 28 to 19. Can you understand that part, sir? 28 to 19. You understand how I got 19? Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. 15 polymorphisms plus four additional polymorphisms for the non blacks, which consist of your whites, Asians, Jews, and Arabs. 15. Uh, let me go back to the. Can you go to the fifth, sixth line of the abstract? Yes, the 15 polymorphisms. Okay, I'm with you. You can keep reading. 15 polymorphisms was shared along most of the population compared, whereas 13 site was found to be endemic to African and four to non-African. Okay, you just read it, four to non-Africans. Non-Africans oh. are your whites, Asians, Jews, and Arabs. So they have a base number of 15, like black people. However, they have considerably less additional, which is Four. So four plus four plus fifteen is nineteen. Exactly, sir. That's how you get the twenty-eight over nineteen ratio for the black people intelligence. Can you see that? Okay. Please. In addition, but it's also important to understand the importance of this study because Gaga is what forced them to conduct this research using Gaga, uh, the formula G-I-J, comma J equals zero. Okay. Did I do something wrong? No, I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, the sorry. question I want to put to you is, so how is it a research conducted by the KKK could evaluate the black people's intelligence to be 28 plus in, compared to themselves, which is a 19 minus? Gaga. You understand that, Mr. Yes. Gaga. Praise God for that. So what, if you take the 28 and the 19, you can approximate that to become 5 over 3. No. You understand? Yeah. So that 5 over 3 in reality becomes what's called a reciprocal in mathematics of the three-fifths or an inverse. Oh. Exact opposite. Okay. So when Israel tried to fraudulently declare black people as being three-fifths, Gaget has ultimately determined the reality, which is we are five thirds. And you see that? Okay. <laughs> the three fifths in reality is Jim Crow's own IQ. And you understand that? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Praise God for that. That's what we call it now. It's mathematical, it's scientific, and it's official. The important thing to understand is the five thirds demolishes the three-fifths, and the three-fifths in reality is Jim Crow's intelligence. That's our intelligence is five-thirds. It's also mathematical in terms of Gottingen University surrendering the baton of mathematical excellence from Gauss over to Professor Ebo. It is scientific from the fact, it's also mathematical from what happened with uh, Professor Dasgupta representing Asia in terms of declaring Professor Ebo as being more close to God than any of us. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it's mathematical, it's scientific, and it's official. 
after 2,500 years of fraud about the intelligence of the black people, Gaga demolished all barriers and got the world to recognize the black people in terms of who they're really supposed to be. This is the point that we want to share and get everyone to understand in terms of the God order. Does everyone understand this God order? Yes, sir. Praise God. We're now going Praise to- God, yes. Yeah. Praise God. We're now going to bring Professor Ebo on, so we hope that you're all ready. Okay. So are you ready? Yes, sir. Yep, ready. And if you have any questions, please ask. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Praise God. Then without any further ado, we're going to connect the professor. Please hold, sir.
that 